Hi there, this is Man Haddad here again. In this lecture, I have to show you how you can configure OSPF on the Mikrotik router OS version 7, and we have to play with the Hello package. That's something we have already learned about. So as you can see here, we have a lab of nine pawns. Before I start doing those pawns, let's go to the scenario to understand what is our scenario, and then I will come back to the pawns and start doing them. So this is my scenario. I do have two routers, two Mikrotik routers, router one, router two, connected to each other. Actually, this is here Ethernet one and not Ethernet two. So on both sides, interfaces Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 1. So then what I need to do is just to put IP address on those interfaces to be the same range. I have to make a network. So this is like a LAN from that side. And this is like another LAN from another side. So what I need to do is just to create a bridge interface and put on it this IP. So the bridge is nothing more like we think that that's a LAN. So the idea is that I want at the end router one to be able to reach to that network. Actually, not only router one, I want as well this network to reach to that network and that network also to reach to that network. So I need to configure SPF here. I need to configure SPF here. I have to show you how you can advertise the connected network. And then we see if the neighborship will be formed and we see if each of the router will receive the routes then this router will have in his routing table that if you want to go to 2.2.2.2, go to this next hole. And router 2 will have in his routing table, if you want to go to 1.1.1.1, go from this next hole. All right, then we do the ping, we see if it's working. Then after we finish from that, I want to play with the hello package. We have to see what are the hello interval, the dead interval. So by default, we said there are 10 and 40. So what I'm going to do, I have to go to router 2 and make, for example, the hello until 11. Then this is 11. This is 10. Then they are not the same. We will see that they will lose neighborship. Now, I make it 10 again. We will see that they will uh, gain neighborship. I'm going, I'm going also to play with the password. So I'm going to put the password over here. Then this has does not have password. This has a password. Then neighborship would be losing. Then I'm also going to change the area. So those things that we have seen them inside the hello package that needs to be matched. So those are the things that we are going to do in uh, this lab to see if uh, what we have learned about the hello package are applied on the Microtech router OS. So uh, let's go now back to the points and start doing them. Point number one, on router one, give an IP address of 192.168.12.1 and uh, that's on the interface Ethernet one and uh, create a bridge and give it IP of 1.1.1.1. So as I have explained to you, that's what we need to do. Please, on router two, the interface is not Ethernet two, it is Ethernet one, what I am now connected to. So uh, don't get confused, okay? All right, so let's go to router one. And uh, from router one, first I have to go to the IP address. And I just need now to put IP address in. So 192.168.12.1 slash 24 on Ethernet one. Then I will create a bridge interface, which is going to be my LAN. So this is like a LAN. And I'm going to put an IP on it, 1.1.1.1, which is the LAN from router one. So this is done on router one. Point number one is done. Point number two on router two, give an IP address of 192.168.12. It should be here dot two and not dot one. And then create a bridge interface, then give it IP of 2.2.2.2.2. So same what we have done on router one. We have to now go to router two. This is router two. Now I'll go again. IP address 192.168.12.2 slash 24 we create a bridge interface to be like the LAN and then I'm gonna put an IP on it 2.2.2.2 on the bridge interface now just to check we can just run a ping to 192.168.12.1 we will see that we have a reply so both routers are able to see each other that's why uh, now what we can do is to run OSPF because if you look now on the IP route this router does not know how to reach to 1.1.1.1. You see, 
he doesn't know anything. So if you try uh, uh, to go to 1.1.1.1 now, we shouldn't be able. So OSPF will help us to solve this problem. Point number two is down. Point number three, on router one, create an OSPF instance and uh, an area, then uh, a template to advertise the connected networks. So that's the difference also on a uh, router seven with router six, you need to create the area. On router six, you had already the area, you didn't need to create it. All right, and uh, on the instance you could uh, change something on it, but now you need to create the area, you need to create the instance on the router OS version 7, and then to make the uh, template. So let's do that. We have to go to router 1. First, we go to routing, and we go to OSPF. Now, if you want, um, you can also give here the router ID if that's something you want to do it which uh, you see it's already taken it 1.1.1.1 dynamically but now we go to OSPF and from here we have first to create the instance so the instance is going to be OSPF instance 1 that's fine you can choose here version 2 or version 3 you see so this is IP version 4 this is IP version 6 so we take this version 4 and the router ID well it is the main which means this one if we look to it so that is the one but uh, if you want you can also write it over here yourself you can just put 1.1.1.1 if you want all right so that is done from that side and now we have to create the area so instance then the area the area we are going to speak about it that is the area zero which is the backbone area so i'm gonna create area zero and we are going again to speak about the areas, the different type of areas and why we need to have uh, multiple areas on our network. But for now, we're going to create the area zero, which is on instance one that I created. And this is the area ID, which is zero, 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 zero. So that's the backbone area. That's fine. So this is done. Now we go to the interface template. And on the template, I have to say that I want to uh, put uh, in uh, uh, o uh, the OSPF uh, area zero. And I have to advertise the network. Over here, you can say which network you want to advertise. 192.168.12.0 slash 24. And I want to advertise over here the network, which is 1.1.1.1. Uh, so the network type is broadcast. OK, we leave it as it is. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's what we all need to do over here. You can, if you want, put here the interfaces that you want. So interface one, but for by just putting the network over here, that is okay. And then I will say here, okay. So this is done from the side of uh, router one. We will check now because at this moment there is no neighbor because we didn't configure router two. So we have to do the same on router two. Point number three is done. Point number four on router two, create a SPF instance area and also the template to advertise the connected networks. All right, so we go to router two. Now we are on router two. Routing, OSPF, we create the instance. So this is the instance. I will put also router ID if you want. Again, you don't have to, just if you want. So that's it. Now we go to the area. Also, I'm gonna use OSPF area zero, the backbone area. And here the template. So the network 192.168.12.0 slash 24 and 2.2.2.2. And okay, so in a moment we should be able to see neighborship form between router one and router two. Point number four is done. Point number five check if both routers can ping each other and they check if OSPF neighborship is formed. So let's go to router one and the OK. We see here in the neighbor, look, there is a neighbor already formed from router one to router two. So if you want, you can make it a bit small to be next to each other. Oops. So let's put it like this. And we open the second one. So we can, like this, we have a better overview so this is router one this is router two router one has neighborship with router two you see the state is full full excellent that means now router one if we go to ip routes 
should be IP routes. You see, he knows how to reach now 2.2.2.2. Excellent. And router 2, if we go to IP routes, he know how to reach 1.1.1.1. Very, very good. So now that means if I run a ping again, and I say I want a ping to 1.1.1.1, but I want the ping to come from 2.2.2.2. So that means from LAN to LAN. All right. I do it from router 2, and here we go. You see, the ping is working. So yeah, we have configured our SPF on Mikrotik router OS version 7. Point number 5 is done. Point number 6, issue a ping from router 2 to 1.1.1.1 and keep it open. So let's do that again. So I have issued a ping and it is open. Let's do point number 7. Go to router 2, and now we have to start working actually with the hello packets. Go to router 2, change the hello interval to 12 seconds. Is the neighborship formed, bring it back to 10. So what does it mean here? If we go to router 2, and if we just put it a bit down like this, and if we go, oh, let me just make it big, all right? So I put this is open here, the ping running, that is the route there. So if we go to the routing or SPF, and on routing or SPF, if we go inside the interface template, so we can see over here, Look, this is the hello and that I was talking about. 10 and 40. This is on router 2. If we go to router 1, that is router 1, routing, and we go to OSPF inside the interface template, should be the same. You see, 10 and 40. So that's why the neighbor has been formed, because one of the criteria, not only that one, there should be also the other criteria that I showed you about, they should match. But this is one of the criteria which is matched. So they said, okay, fine. Change the hello interval, put it 12. Look to the ping. So the ping is running, everything is fine. Now I just change the hello interval to 12. Okay. So we have to wait a little bit and we should see in a moment that the ping should stop. So just give it a second and we will see, first of all, we will look to the neighbor here. We shall not have neighbor anymore in a moment. And we shall not have here the route anymore and the ping should stop because the uh, uh, the hello now is 12 from this side, from the other side is uh, 10. So 12 and 10, they don't match to each other. Then this is not going to work in a moment. Of course, uh, this uh, what you see here because I'm uh, running GNS3, but also you remember the hello uh, interval and the data interval takes up to 40 seconds for this to finish. But anyway, what you have seen now, you see request timed out, neighborship is gone, the route is gone. Yeah, amazing, right? So now let's go back to the uh, interface template. Remember that it takes up to 40 seconds for this to happen because this is the dead interval. So the router wait up to 40 seconds until you say, well, this neighbor is not there anymore. So now let's put it again 10. So from the both sides, there are 10. And okay. So now if we go back to the neighbor, we should have a neighbor in a moment. We should see that is the neighbor is now two way. It is full. Now we should receive from here the route from our SPF. And we should have the ping working again. So now it is full. In a moment, this is the route and that is the ping working again. So really like I have explained to you, this is one of the criteria that should match. So let's see what is the other point to do. Point number seven is done. Point number eight. On router two, put a password on OSPF. Is the neighborship still formed? Remember, then uh, you also uh, need to have the uh, authentication password the same from both sides. Now there is no password, but let's put password on router2. So this is router2, the ping is working. How to do the password? Again, everything you have to do is from the interface template. So I'm going to uh, use here uh, the authentication MD5, and I'm going to put uh, here the password 1234567. And the authentication ID, you can leave it nothing, but if you want, you can just put, for example, number one. So I just put the password based on MD5. You see, you have MD5 and you have simple. MD5, it makes hashing for the password. So anyone capturing traffic in your network, he can't see the password wide and simple. He can see the password because it's plain text. So that's why I prefer to use MD5. So from this side, we have password. From the other side, we don't have password. Let's see what's going to happen. So again, we wait a little bit. Let's go to the neighbor to see what's going to happen. So in a moment, 
the neighbor once the dead interval is finished the neighbor will uh, be not formed anymore we lose the route and we don't have the ping so let's give it a bit of time until this to happen so you can see now directly here we go so we don't have neighbor the route is gone and this is gone so here you can do one of the two things or you remove the password from the side or you put the password on router one right so let's do it we go to router one on the interface template i'm going to say i want to use authentication md5 one two three four five six authentication id one apply so that means in a moment we should have the name because both they have now the same password both the rmd5 and uh, yeah here we go so this is the neighbor is on in its state it can go to two-way then to full and then we should receive in a moment the route and then we are able to ping so this is full already the route will show up in a moment on router 2 and then the ping will be working again you see it's amazing so those things you should be very careful when you play with the hello package that those things are the same this is the ping is working now what else if i put here on router one i put instead of authentication md5 i put simple so i'm gonna use the same authentication which is if we look here one two three four five six but i'm gonna make it simple so do you think that is gonna work let's check i make okay here let's have a look now if this is gonna stay working let's give it a time to see so you can see that the neighbor now is gone, the route is gone, and we don't have ping anymore. Wow. That means that you should use the same authentication method that you want to use it on both routers. So if it's MD5, then you put it there also MD5. And if it's simple on one side, then the other side should be simple because those are two different authentication algorithms that are happening. So let me just put it back MD5. So we have neighborship again. So I'll put it MD5 and we should have neighborship in a moment. Point number eight is done, and the last point of this lab is to play with the area. So now both are, are on area zero. Now they said that uh, on router two, we have to put uh, Ethernet one on area one. So we have area one from one side, we have area zero from the other side on the other router. So as you know, if the areas are not the same, then the neighbor will not be formed. So let's have a look. So we have now the ping is working. Now, what I need to do is to go from this router and I'm going to change over here the area and I'm going to make it area 1. So I just say 0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.1. All right. And uh, directly, once I make it area 1, you see, I don't have neighbor. Because from the other side, if you go to router 1, the area that I'm using is area 0 which is 0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0. You see why here now it is 0 0.0.0.1. Let's bring it back to 0. And in a moment, we should have the neighbor again. And uh, we should have the route received. So let's have a look. So in a moment, we should have the route received and we should have the ping working. So here we go. So yeah, now th there is still the stop. But that's something, yeah, I'm not going to cover it now because I need first to explain about what is the stop areas and uh, wh yeah, why we need to have stop areas. But just remember that uh, also on stop areas, if you have two uh, peer uh, routers that uh, they are not together as uh, on the, the connected interfaces on the stop areas, that they will not uh, form neighborship. So if you have one on the stop, one on the normal area, which is, for example, area zero, then they will not form neighborship. Point number nine is, uh, is done. And uh, with this point, I have uh, showed you about uh, how you can configure OSPF on router as version seven. And then we have played with uh, the uh, hello package. I have showed you that by just changing the criteria that I have showed you inside the hello package, which should match, then there will not be any more neighborship between the routers. So I hope that this lecture was informative for you and I'll see you in the upcoming lecture.